At the end of last lecture, I asked you which of these was going to be the outcome for me pulling on a cart with a steady force. So now let's see which it is. So let's see the cart pull now and see what the cart does. And I'm going to put all of the points of the motion diagram on there and zoom in so you can see it a little better. And you see that that, that is definitely speeding up. Perhaps even more convincingly, here's the position versus time data generated straight out of that motion diagram. And that's clearly speeding up. You can see the curve of the graph. So me pulling on the cart with a fairly steady force made it speed up. And so we can now start to answer this question of what do forces do. Forces cause accelerations. And we're going to keep coming back to this over and over again, and we're going to be more and more specific about exactly what we mean by this. And, you know, every now and then a student will ask, hey, you know, professor, is that last thing you just said really important? Well, this one, yeah, this one's pretty important. Now we come to this other question. What happens when there are no forces? Now you may think that when there's no force, it means the thing doesn't move. Or you may think that when there's no force on an object, if it's moving, then that means it'll slow down. And those are both fairly natural things to believe. In your everyday experience, if you're pushing something and you stop pushing, it stops, right? Push, get up right now, push a chair across the floor. When you stop pushing, it stops moving. But does it stop immediately? Well, if you're not on a carpeted floor, it probably doesn't. It'll slide for a little while before it stops. So you probably realize, if you think for a moment, that it's friction that stops the chair. And on a smooth chair, the chair could move for quite a while. Or even better, if your chair has wheels on it, it'll go farther because there's less friction on it. But the friction will eventually stop it. But here's the thing. Friction is a force. Now, it might not have occurred to you that friction is a force, but I'll show you that friction is a force. So I'm going to push this book across the desk, but I'm not going to do it by pushing on the edge of the book. I'm going to put my hand on top of the book and push it back and forth with my hand there. Now that means I'm using friction between my hand and the book to push it. Now, if you're not convinced that I just used friction, I can put a glossy book on top. Now I've reduced the friction because this book is slippery on top of that one. And with the reduced friction, now I can't push the great big physics book anymore. So I'm able to push the big book using friction. And so friction is a push or a pull and therefore it's a force. Now you may not like this definition of a force as a push or pull, and frankly I don't either. It's awfully vague, but it can be useful sometimes for just recognizing what a force is. So now that we've established that friction is a force, that tells us that the chair pushing experiment really doesn't answer our question about what happens when there are no forces acting on something we really need to do an experiment without friction. Now, you know, we could do all sorts of things. We could go out on a frozen lake, but there'd still be some friction on the ice. The ideal thing is we could all launch ourselves into orbit and do some experiments in space. There, it's really easy to have no friction. I'm afraid I don't have the budget for that. But we can use an air puck. So an air puck is literally just a little hovercraft. It's a little puck and it pulls in air and it blows the air out the bottom. So the air is coming out the bottom and that pushes up on the puck. And so here's the thing. We're not really going to see what happens with no forces at all because as you know, gravity is pulling down on the puck. Right? We haven't really discussed that yet, but we'll get to it in more detail. 
But if that was it, then the puck would accelerate down. The reason it doesn't, well, if it's turned off, it just rests on the floor, and the floor keeps it from accelerating down by pushing up on it. When the puck is turned on, it's the air that it's blowing out the bottom that pushes up on it and allows it to float. But hopefully that can convince you that we can ignore those because they cancel each other out. If you just leave the puck alone, it'll just hover there in place. So I'm going to push on the puck and then I'm going to let go. And we're going to see how it moves after I've let go. And we're trying to answer two questions here. First of all, is this the experiment we're looking for? Does it show us what we want? Motion with no force. Now, you may have a sneaking suspicion that after I let go, that there's some force that persists in the direction of motion. And what would that look like? Well, we know what a force in the direction of motion does. It would cause the puck to speed up. So if the outcome of the experiment is that the puck speeds up, then we have to conclude two things. One, we would have to conclude that this is not the experiment we're looking for. Two, we would have to conclude that I am a Jedi, okay? Because if I can exert a force on the puck after it's left my hand, okay? If I can exert a force on it when I'm not touching it, then I am clearly a Jedi, all right? So that's the outcome of the experiment I'm hoping for because that would be really cool, okay? But on the other hand, if we see something else, okay, if the puck slows down or moves at constant speed or moves at constant speed and then slows down, then that's going to be an experiment we're looking for. And it's going to answer for us this question of what does the motion look like with no force acting on it? So once again, if you're just looking at this on YouTube, pause the video write down which you think is correct, I hope you think I'm a Jedi, and then go on to the next video which will answer the question. And in the next video what you'll see first is the puck going across the screen. I'll be just off the screen to the left having given it the push and we'll look at how it moves. If you're in the course and you're doing this from the Moodle then it's going to get you to answer this question before taking you to the next lecture.